All right, so we left off making this footprint right here. And uh, now we are going to create the schematic symbol that will link to this that we can use in our design. So we're going to go to our schematic lib. And so just like for the PCB library, they create a kind of a default component. And we're just going to place it inside of there. So let's go ahead and place a rectangle. And I'm just going to make it this size. Escape. We're going to need a few pins. Um, so let's take a look over here. It seems like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen pins. All right, so we have we've created thirteen pins and Let's go ahead and name these guys. AUXCL, AUXCL. Right, so we have all of our pins named, and I'm going to go ahead and clean these guys up to look a bit neater. So I'm going to go ahead and disable the designator, as well as I'm going to take the pin length down to 100 mil. Now, usually I put my VDDs on the top left and my grounds in the bottom left. And so let's go ahead and do that. We have VDD. I press the spacebar to rotate and we'll put him right up here. I'll put VDDIO up here. Um, you can really organize this however you want. I kind of have my standard of uh, how I like things to look. I put my SDA and SCL over here. Now you'll notice we have two of these uh, RESV pins. You can just delete one because they're redundant. Some people keep them. Um, I prefer not to have the redundancy. I also don't put the not connected pins because they're not connected. Uh, this looks good. So we have SDA SCL, which is what we're mainly going to be using for our I2C. And we have our interrupt pin. These are some extras that um, we are probably not going to use unless you're using SPI. We have aux CL, aux DA, which I'm not entirely sure what those do right now, but it seems like those are just not connected. Um, this is connected to ground, so we put it next to the ground. And then we have VDD and VDDIO, which are supply voltages. And I just put those in the top left. Last thing we're going to do is make a little text name to kind of give a description for what this this does I usually like Arial I do bold and then I center it which find it's easier to read and let's call this our 9 axis sensor
So I like to center the name, so I'm going to select the name in the box, and I'll go and edit, align, align horizontal centers, so that's a lot cleaner. Let's change the name, so call this sensor 9 axis. Our designator, we're going to use um, U question mark. Let's do a descriptor. So a descriptor, I'm just going to copy um, some information about this. So let's just use this. Now I'm going to add a footprint, the footprint we just created um, in the previous video. And so that adding this footprint is going to link the two together. So browse, you'll see this is the footprint we created in the last video. Going to go ahead and click that, okay. And okay. And now the two are connected, so we can use them as one part. Finally, I'm going to go to our project tab, and I'm just going to compile this to make sure nothing was wrong. So compile, save everything. There are no errors with compilation. So we have just created the schematic symbol, which links to our footprint. And in any future project, we can now use uh, this schematic symbol and drag it into our project and connect it up.